Well, good morning, beautiful family. I'm coming at you live from my home here in Clovis. We're doing our 10 at 10. And today I just wanna piggyback on what I shared yesterday. So if you didn't get a chance to hear yesterday's message, I encourage you to go back and hear that because it's kind of a, a springboard for today. Now, I do have some testimonies that I wanna share with you, but I will be sharing that with you later during the week. For today, I just wanna pull out some more of the truths that we talked about yesterday. Now, yesterday we read the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, today I want to continue just a little bit on the theme of the day of the Lord. So we know that the day of the Lord is both day and night at the exact same time. And so we saw in our story with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego how they found themselves in the fiery furnace. So you need to go back and read Daniel chapter 3. But I want to look at the book of Corinthians today because this is another picture of the fiery furnace. And this is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 in verse 11 through 15. So again, we're going to see uh, the reference to the fire. We're going to see the reference to the day of the Lord and what God is doing. So let's read here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says in verse 11, No other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We're talking about foundations. We're talking about the things we're building our life upon. We're talking about root systems. We're talking about things that are beneath the surface, going a little deeper into the foundations of who we are. <clears throat> it says, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw. Now, in this scripture, there's six things that are mentioned. Three, which are built in the fire, which are eternal. And that gold is not natural gold, corruptible gold. That is That gold there is speaking of the divine nature of God. The silver is a picture of the redemption, the precious stones, those things that are eternal. Or wood, hay, and and straw or stubble. Those are the things that will be burned up and consumed in the fire. They're not eternal. So in the hour of the day of the Lord, God is sovereignly branding our hearts with eternity, uh, teaching us how to turn away our eyes from looking at worthless things, those things that are temporary, those things that are not eternal, those things that are wood, hay, and straw. Because it says in verse 13, it says, Each one's work will become clear. No one is exempt from the day of the Lord. Because it says, For the day, in capital letters, that's the day of the Lord, will declare it. That's a declaration in the midst of the day because this is what I'm after. It will be, not it might be, it will be revealed by fire. And the fire is going to test each one's work of what sort it is. So the day is going to be revealed by fire. That is our connection to our story of the fiery furnace. Remember, they refused to bow. And in their obedience, they found themselves in the fire, but in the fire, they got delivered and set free. So it's going to be revealed by fire. And verse 14, it says, if anyone's work, which he has built endures, he will receive a reward. So whatever we're building, if it is in this day of the fire of the Lord, if it endures, if it remains, there's going to be reward. But if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. 
Come on, our deliverance comes through the fire. So this is what I want to encourage you with today. I believe that God in His sovereign, merciful love, He is wanting to encounter each of us in a very individual, a very personal, a very encounter with Him that if you will just go into that place of encounter, if you will choose not to bow to the fear, because I want to pull something else out of our passage yesterday in Daniel 3. In Daniel 3, verse 17, it says, If that is the case, our God, He's able to deliver us. So they understood the ability of God. Do you understand your God is able? I think a lot of us in this hour, we know our God is able. But let me show you what he's after. We can't just stop with that declaration saying, my God's able. God's got this. He's able. There's so much more. Because what they said was, they said, he will deliver us, but if not. Now, They said, if not, let it be known. Now, we've read the rest of the story. We know they were delivered. But the posture of their heart, they said, God's able, but if we don't get delivered, we're still not going to bow. That is what God was after. When they went into the fiery furnace bound, He was after that place of unbelief. Now, you can look at this many ways. You can say, well, that's just the sovereignty of God. They were just fully submitted to His sovereignty, and they were saying, if He doesn't deliver us, we're still not going to bow. But I believe there's, yes, that is a part of it, but I believe there's so much more in this story because God is saying, if you will just go into that secret place of worship and present your body as a living sacrifice and lay yourself before Him and let the fire of His love come and overshadow you, that there is in this hour of the day of the Lord, He is delivering us from unbelief. So I want to encourage you with this today. Now, I have posted right before I came on at 10 o'clock, I posted a song called The Refiner's Fire. This is how I want to leave you today. I want you to go back and I want you to click on that post. It says an invitation to the fiery furnace. I want you to get alone by yourself. Go however you need to do that. Find a room if you need to go in your closet. Find a place. Put this song on all by yourself. Throw yourself as a living sacrifice. Lay yourself on the floor before God and just allow His presence to overshadow you and let Him deliver you from unbelief. A lot of us know He's able, but we're saying, but if, he's, if, but if He doesn't deliver us, God is saying, no, I'm going to deliver you in this hour. I am the delivering God. I am the God of deliverance. So whatever has bound you, whatever, I'm saying, go for the big things. Like you've been believing God for restoration in your marriage. And God is saying, go after the big ones. You've been believing God for restoration with your children, something in your health, some some barren place in your life, whatever it is. You've been believing God for just what's next in your life. Go for the big things. You know God's able, but if you will just throw yourself into His fiery love in a posture of saying, God, There's still parts that I'm saying, I know you're able, but maybe you won't do it. Let him burn. Let him come in an encounter of his delivering power and just let him wash over you because God is bringing us to deeper places of faith. So let me pray for you today. So after we pray, I want you to go back and I want you to hear that song. It's about 12 minutes long. 
But I believe that you are going to encounter the fiery presence of God. And beloved, you have to do that. Every miracle in scripture required an act of faith. Think about Lazarus. Like that is the greatest miracle, resurrection. But God said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus had to come forth. The man with a withered hand. Jesus said, stretch out your hand. The man who was, who was sick on his bed, Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. We have a part in this. We have to do something. So I believe as you lay yourself, and you're going to lay that the big one, like the big miracle you've been believing. I'm talking, you're looking for a supernatural miracle of God. As you go there, he is going to literally give you some specific instructions. Some of you who are believing for restoration in your marriage, God is going to specifically give you some things to do. I'm hearing right now, some of you wives, he is going to ask you to wash your husband's feet. Some of you that haven't talked to your children, he's going to say, go there. Go there, make that contact. Some of you that have been offended by a brother or a sister in Christ, you need to go there. Some of you that um, you've been afraid and you, you, you know that God is able to take care of your needs, but you're afraid and, and you're not that foundation in your finances, even with tithing. That's a foundational thing. That's the beginning place. Whatever specific thing God is saying to you, you're going to find it in that personal encounter with God. This morning, as I laid myself before God and just, I literally felt the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit touching me in an area that I've been saying, Lord, I know you're able But if not, I'm still going to worship you. God touched me in that place this morning. So I encourage you. He is overshadowing his people in a mighty deliverance. And he is touching the area of unbelief because he wants us to rise to new levels of faith. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for your overshadowing now of your spirit. Father, I thank you that it is the day of the Lord. It is the day of your deliverance, God. And Father, where we've been bound by uncertainty, God, where we have listened to the voice of the enemy, Lord, where we've been disappointed, God, today is the day of deliverance, God. So, Father, I pray everyone listening that they would go to that place of encounter, Lord. Even now, as soon as we get off of this 10 at 10, they're just going to go and prostrate themselves before you. And they're going to believe again. And they're going to encounter your spirit, your delivering fire. You're going to be the fourth one in the fire. You're going to set them free from unbelief, God. So, Lord, I thank you. And God, I expect the testimony of many to say, Yes, God, you are the God of the miraculous. So, Lord, I thank you. I bless you, Lord. And I thank you for holy encounters today. Today is the day of deliverance. In Jesus' name.